This is FAIR TV. I'm Janine Jackson. Champions of domestic spying are having a rough time these days, but only some media outlets seem to be noticing. On June 17th, Barack Obama told Charlie Rose the secret NSA surveillance program was transparent. Should this be transparent in some way? It is transparent. That's why we set up the FISA court. Rose failed to point out that a process that transpires in total secrecy is actually opaque. Nor did Rose blink when Obama suggested that surveillance had foiled a New York City bomb plot. We've got a guy like uh, Najibullah uh, 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 Zazi, right. who was driving cross country trying to blow up uh, uh, a New York subway system. That plot, as AP had reported, was actually thwarted by British intelligence using conventional methods. But like Obama, many media continue to cite the foiled subway bomb plot as though the AP report had never happened. Meanwhile, NSA director Keith Alexander got lots of coverage when he claimed the programs had thwarted dozens of terrorist events. Media repeat that, despite a statement by Senate Intelligence Committee members Ron Wyden and Mark Udall that began, we have not seen any evidence showing that the NSA's dragnet collection of Americans' phone records has produced any uniquely valuable intelligence. Alexander's claim that the surveillance foiled a plot to bomb Wall Street was debunked within hours by the Christian Science Monitor, which reported that the story he was citing did not involve a bomb at all. Yet media continue to echo it. So credit goes to the AP and Christian Science Monitor for challenging the official line and reporting the story that others are missing, that the White House's defense of these surveillance programs is in tatters. New York Times columnist Tom Friedman was a guest on public radio station KQED's Forum June 19th, and author and fair associate Norman Solomon called into the show to call Friedman out on his dire shortage of remorse about the Iraq War, particularly given his, quote, very large role in cheering on, with his usual caveats, but cheering on the invasion of Iraq before it took place, close quote. Well, Friedman's response was a challenge. I wrote a book um, called Longitudes and Attitudes that um, has all my columns leading up to the Iraq War. Um, and what you will find if you read those columns is someone agonizing over uh, a very, very difficult decision. Uh, to call it cheerleading is just stupid and obnoxious, okay? In 1999, Friedman made a call to blow up a different power station in Iraq every week so no one knows when the lights will go off or who's in charge. In early 2003, he claimed, there is a part of many young Arabs today that praise the U.S. will not only oust Saddam, but all other Arab leaders as well. On the eve of the invasion, Friedman wrote, Saddam does not threaten us today. He can be deterred. Taking him out is a war of choice, but it's a legitimate choice. Well, in May of 2003, Friedman told Charlie Rose the war was unquestionably worth doing as an attack on the terrorist bubble. And what they needed to see was American boys and girls going house to house from Basra to Baghdad um, and basically saying, which part of this sentence don't you understand? You don't think... You know, we care uh, about our open society. You think this bubble fantasy, we're just going to let it grow? Well, suck on this, okay? That doesn't sound like someone who's agonized over a difficult decision, but maybe we're just stupid and obnoxious. Well, finally, we were saddened to hear of the June 18th death of Rolling Stone and BuzzFeed reporter Michael Hastings. He's best remembered for his profile of General Stanley McChrystal, in which views McChrystal expressed of his civilian bosses got him withdrawn as commander of U.S. forces in Afghanistan. Well, the New York Times used its obituary to try to discredit Hastings' biggest story, showing gatekeeper media's attitude towards those people who step outside acceptable lines. At the time, CBS's Lara Logan sniffed, Michael Hastings has never served his country the way McChrystal has, which may depend on what you think of the relative merits of an aggressive free press versus the occupation of foreign countries, we suppose. The Times said a Pentagon Inspector General report found insufficient evidence of wrongdoing by McChrystal and his aides, 
But that meant insufficient to bring disciplinary action, which is not the same thing as saying a reporter has not supported his article's charges. The report said the Pentagon couldn't find witnesses to acknowledge some of the things said in the article. But that's not so surprising, given the consequences to those people. And readers might have wanted to know that Hastings declined to turn over his interview tapes to a government inquiry. Well, Hastings told Fair that one of his rules for reporting was to think, what does everybody know who's on the inside, but no one's willing to say or write? His death leaves us outsiders just that much more in the dark. I'm Janine Jackson. This is Fair TV.